There is a but, but, but ton of people stoked out there for the new Nissan Z. Nolan won't shut up about it. I can't stop dreaming about it. And there's probably gonna be fights in the freaking streets for the keys to these things. So I wanted to take a little step back, back to before the 400, before the 350, before the 300, before even the 280ZX, before all of this, there's the 240Z. Now we wouldn't have any of these other cars without this one. We almost didn't have any of them at all. Not without a little thing that I like to call a conspiracy. I'm talking butterfly Ashton Kutcher effects stuff here, guys. This story is crazy and it took months for us to get it straight. Why? There's tons of rumors, false reports, and even the Z experts around the world still can't agree on the details of it more than 50 years later. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the conspiracy to build the Datsun 240Z. A big thanks to carparts.com for sponsoring today's video. Don't you can't sing. Sing I am Hello? Mimo? No man, it, uh, it's your cousin James. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I'm on my way to Mimo's for the holidays. But I have to fix your truck. Oh, that old thing? I already fixed it. That's what I'm driving. <laughs> what? You did what? I just did what you said and I went to carparts.com. And you know what? You weren't lying. They really do make it quick and easy to find the parts that you need when you need them. Well, buddy, I gotta say, I'm really proud of you. Gee whiz, Cousin James. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if I actually am clumsy or perhaps the nickname Clumsy Carl perpetuated my self-narrative so potently. If I ever stopped being clumsy, I wouldn't know who I was no more. All right, Carl, your truck's all set for the long, snowy drive to Meemaw's house. Remember, if you break down in the middle of nowhere, tell Mima to go to carparts.com so you can get parts for any job and any budget. Golly gee, cousin, is this really the end of my time out here in LA? Well, based on your donut intern contract, I think you're obligated to be in one more video. Does that mean my truck's gonna break down again? Yes, 100%. All right, buddy, have a good time. Well, toot sweet. Just like every heartwarming story at Disney, this story starts with a demotion. The year is 1960, and after 15 years of working as Nissan's head of advertising in Yokohama, Japan, 50-year-old Yutaka Katayama, who you probably know as Mr. K, is being transferred to New York City to establish Nissan's US office. Now this doesn't sound like a downward move, but trust me, it is. Nissan's other executives were tired of Mr. K's wild ideas like taking Nissan racing or establishing the Tokyo Auto Salon. What a freaking weirdo! This dude's bat shit. So they're moving him somewhere that he can't rock the boat as hard. But let me tell you something about Mr. K, all right? This dude was born and raised to rock boats. When you're a boat rocker, obstacles and opportunities look the same. They both look like boats. Boats that you want to rock. Ask me how I know. I happen to be quite a boat rocker myself. Now before he leaves for America, Mr. K's older brother gives him a parting gift, a Japanese naval flag flown to inspire sailors with this motivational message. Let each man do his utmost. It's called the Z Ensign. Oh my God. Are you familiar with the concept of foreshadowing? I may have written the book on foreshadowing. Meanwhile. Back in Japan at Nissan HQ, a young 25 year old Yoshihiko Matsuo is settling into his new job at Nissan. This dude wanted to be a car designer since he was three years old when he got busted for drawing on his grandparents' doors. I think we can all relate. If you're watching this channel, chances are that you've drawn on a door or two. Well, guess what, grandpa? Now he's getting paid for it and it feels like a dream. But as most of us find out, as we enter the real world, big business ain't so interested in dreams. And all too often, Matsuo's ideas are turned down for being too extreme. He's a boat rocker. 
just like Mr. K. So he just turns around and tells his bosses that the new sedan that Pininfarina designed for Nissan looks like a pooping butt. Looks like a pooping butt. Looks like a pooping butt. He actually did this. The guy told them that the car looked like a pooping butt. Nissan had just paid Pininfarina big money to design the new Bluebird. And this rookie comes in and says that the car's downward sloping rear looks like someone squatting on a toilet. That's in quotes, my man. He said that, all right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like this rubs the supervisors wrong and not in the way that you secretly like, you know what I mean? So just like Mr. K, Matsu is peeved, but not really surprised when he gets a demeaning assignment to design a miniature car for an amusement park. But soon after he nails his bumper car assignment, he gets his first last laugh. The 410 Bluebird that he said looked like a pooping butt is selling like a pooping butt. And this makes the higher ups reconsider his taste. And they ask him to redesign the car, which he does. He also suggests a new trim level with bucket seats, a floor mounted four speed manual transmission and dual carburetors for more power, baby. And bing, bang, boom. Mitsuo just created one of the world's first sports sedans, the Bluebird Super Sports Sedan or SSS, you know, like what a cobra says when it's about to be stepped on. SSS. I got venom, brother. Now, thanks to the success of the Bluebird, Mitsu is promoted to Nissan Sports Car Design Division in 1965. And thanks to this promotion, he meets Mr. K. Now, without this meeting, there's no Z conspiracy. And without this conspiracy, there's no Z, all right? Follow the money. In his first few months as the head honcho of Nissan's fourth design studio, Matsua and his two teammates produce a few sketches and models of two-seat roadsters and... Uh, pretty cool. Very cool looking, very cool. And Nissan execs assumed that they're working on a replacement for the only sports car in the company's lineup, the aging Datsun 1600 Roadster. But are they really? Mitsuo wanted to build a brand new sports car, something sleek, something modern and fast that would show the world what Japan was capable of. Mr. K had the same idea and a new title. He was now the president of Nissan USA. And after five years of fierce boat rocking, Mr. K successfully shifted America's view of Datsun from a company that makes cheap underpowered tin cans to a company that makes cheap underpowered reliable tin cans. So Mr. K visits Japan later that year, and this is when he meets Masuo, who shows him a roadster design with an aerodynamic, European-inspired body. And trust me when I say this, you guys, it doesn't look anything like a pooping butt. It looks like the future. And Mr. K likes the future. So he tells Matsuo that this is exactly the kind of thing that he wants for the American market. And Matsuo tells Mr. K his managers want him to take a more conservative approach. As you can probably imagine, Dragons, this triggers a bonding moment. The kind of moment that only happens when two leashed visionaries catch a glimpse of a future unchained. Boat rocker meets boat rocker. Things are about to get wet and wild. So how can Matsuo continue developing the sports car of the future while tasked to keep working on the boring alternative? Well, it's gonna take a little conspiracy. All right, funnily enough, the key to tricking Nissan corporate is baked into their corporate process. Nissan design teams work on multiple prototypes at once to develop several options for the bosses to choose from. So Mitsuo's dream sports car is already filed under plan A, okay? And the conservative designs that his bosses want him to build are filed under plan B. So if he and his team shift focus to plan A, he's gonna be in deep dookie and he knows this. So he flexes his boss man muscles and hires additional designers to work on plan B. And decades later, Mitsuo fesses up to this con in a memoir that he wrote with Mr. K called Fair Lady Z Story. On the face of things, it looked as if I was developing both projects at the same time. But in fact, with the extra staff, I was able to concentrate all of my efforts towards the plan A proposal. And the rest is history. 
With Mr. K as the wind beneath Mitsuo's wings, he and his assistant designer, Akio Yoshida, focused on refining Plan A. Then, in 1966, something happens that turns the project on its head. The US is considering new vehicle safety rules, and rumors are flying that they're gonna ban convertibles. The National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act didn't ban convertibles when it passed in 1967, but it did mandate seatbelts, so that's good. I believe in seatbelts, you should wear them. But in reaction to the rumors, the Plan A team shifted to fixed roof designs, fastbacks and notchbacks. They also build one model with a target top. And what's that little emblem on the target bar? Enhance, enhance. It's the freaking Z Ensign. Which will make more sense now that I remember this part. Mitsuo received a special message in the mail from Mr. K after they met. A Z Ensign flag. I mean, you'd think that these guys would name the car after a cool flag, right? In early 1967, Mr. K returns to Yokohama to check out the new Bluebird 510 before it's released in the US. Another Datsun legend. We did an episode way back in the day. While he's there, he checks in on the secret sports car project. And what he sees completely blows him away. The car is stunning. It's long hood and short sloping fastback recessed sugar scoop headlights and slim front bumper dividing the open front grille recalls the prettiest sports cars Europe has to offer. I'm talking Ferrari 275 GTB and Jaguar E-Type Coupe. Yes, Matsua and his team were inspired by those greats, but this clay model is wholly original. It's more efficient. It's more refined. It's more Japanese, dare I say. It's the car Mr. K's been waiting for, the car to show the world what Nissan is capable of, what Japan is capable of. Now this new model is so dang good that Mr. K clues in Nissan first design department manager, Taichi Hara. And Hara is so stoked on it that he assembles a team for engineering development. He's convinced he can persuade the board of directors to approve this car in the future. So he gets the engineering ball rolling early without running it by any of the corporate higher ups. Add Mr. Hara to our list of Project Z conspirators. Now remember, conspiracies are defined as plots devised in secret by two or more people. And Mr. Hara makes three. We're only eight away from Mr. K's 11, okay? Things are finally getting real, all right? There's nothing more real than engineering. I've looked it up. Google it. Pause. Go. Wait, hold on. Unpause. Open a new window. All right, pause. Okay. Google, is there anything more real than engineering? No. So this is where the realest dude so far comes in, all right? Engineering designer, Hitoshi Uemura. He's in charge of engineering the yet to be named new sports car. And on June 8th, 1967, Umara and the engineering team meet with Matsua and the design team kicking the project in a high enough gear that someone's like, you know what guys? We should probably name this thing. Uh, okay. Um, what about the Nissan uh, B? Chief Engineer Hajima Suitsu is like, all right, we'll figure it out later. For now, we'll just give it a development code name. Um, not a lot left. We've made about 25 cars at this point. How about the Z? The Z ensign flag had nothing to do with the car's name. Weird. So two months before the June meeting, the engineer team came up with a checklist of musts for the new sports car, including the car will ship for sale in August, 1969. Nice. North American retail price will start at an oddly specific $2,546. Nice. The car will be profitable in North America. Sounds like a good plan for a business. Now those specific mentions of North America are mostly the results of Mr. K's influence. Now he'd been nagging Nissan to build a better sports car for the American market for years. A hatchback coupe with a torquey 2.4 liter straight six would light American fires hotter than any tiny four cylinder Datsun Roadster ever could. This new sports car also had to fit our big old American bots. No big deal, right? Well, Mitsuo and his team painstakingly refined every little detail of this car. So when Uimara tells Mitsuo to raise the roof line to accommodate taller drivers, widen the car 
the 50 optional automatic transmission and all this other stuff. Mitsuo is like, nope, and I get it. All right, this dude battled so hard to keep his dream of a sleek, low, lightweight sports car alive as he envisioned it. He wasn't about to mess that all up for, you know, big fat chili dog eating Americans like me. Uh, I wish I could still eat chili dogs. I'd go to Cincinnati right now, boy. But if a good percentage of the Western world couldn't fit in the Z, it would be doomed. Someone just has to get this through to Matsuo, who's at his desk listening to Little Peep with his arms crossed. Hara breaks Matsuo's freeze and brokers a compromise, and the design and engineering teams work together to keep the car sleek, low, and lightweight, but also let a big boy like me and Nolan fit behind the wheel. Now this takes six major layout changes and 70 individual tweaks. All these changes require a new clay model to represent the final design of Project C. Mitsuo assigns Kumio Tamura to finalize the fine lines of the car on the clay, and it's this version of Project Z that lights the four-wheeled world on fire. But before we get there, we have to go to a very important meeting, possibly the most important meeting in the history of Nissan. It's 1967, an entire legitimate gaggle of Nissan execs are waiting for the sheets to come off several prototype sports cars. They're here to pick one for production. A few hours ago, Tichi Hara secretly arranged the prototypes to make Project Z look like the obvious choice. Mr. K mingles with the execs, ready to act surprised when the sheet comes off Project Z. His dream, the dream he shares with Mitsuo, who worked so hard to bring it to life, is on the line. Is on the line. Mr. K's stoke gets the better of him. This is it, he says. Well, I don't know what you guys think. I think this one's probably a pretty good choice. I mean, whatever you guys think, but uh, this one's pretty good. And thankfully, the president of Nissan at the time, Kitsugi Kamimata, is impressed. And with two words, he sets an honest to goodness sports car revolution into motion. He says, it's good. The conspiracy worked. But why was it necessary in the first place? All right, because taking risks is scary. In the business world, it's expensive. Playing it safe is, you know, safer. In the mid 60s, this plan and designs were dangerous, especially for a Japanese car company. I mean, remember what happened about 20 years before. Just the idea of the Z project was big nuts, all right? In more ways than one, but these guys figured out how to make it happen. All it took was a little, sleight of hand, and years of intense, inspired work. Nissan unveils the Datsun 240Z in New York City on October 22nd, 1969. Nice, and people freaking loved it. Not only is this car beautiful, it offers Porsche 911 performance at a Mustang price point. That silky smooth 2.4 liter straight six sounds the business and has the beans to back it up. The handling is freaking superb. And look at it, guys. Nothing on the road can touch the 240Z. Even cars going for twice the money. And like I said earlier, an honest to goodness sports car revolution. Nissan sells more than 110,000 Zs globally in the first three years of the model, which is a huge deal for Japanese import at the time. And the car proves just as potent on the track and on brutal rally stages as it was on the mean streets of any town USA. When the first generation Z hit the end of production in 1978, more than half of a million had been sold, with some 83% landing in American driveways. Z fever had taken the US by storm. And as we know today, the letter Z is directly linked to Nissan's success in the States. More than that, the original Z is hugely responsible for America's embrace of any Japanese car. Whether you're a Nissan fan or not, if you're an American who likes Japanese cars, you owe everything to Mr. K, Mr. Matsuo, and the Z conspiracy. Because without them, we'd all be driving Mustangs, and there'd be a lot less of us around, because we'd all be dead. It's been years, but the comment still haunts me. More hearse purrs? Was it even possible? How much horse is too much horse? I had to know. Test after test, Hello? failure after Eli. failure. I began to doubt that I'd ever find out. Then, it happened. I think I have it! I think I have it! I've done it. 
I've done it. Her spurs are infinite. So saddle up boys and girls and hit the trails with this 100% scientifically accurate new Hearst Purs shirt. Available right now at DonutMedia.com. And it features everything that you need to know about pure equine muscle. Now a real horse, that'll cost you thousands of dollars. But this pony is $29.98, which is way less than $30. Go ask your mathematician uncle. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. Uh, if you liked it, hit that like button. It really, really helps us out. If you don't wanna miss anything, hit that subscribe button. We have new merch dropping every single week. Go to donutmedia.com to pick yourself something up uh, and join our mailing list because like I said, a bunch of stuff coming out. You don't wanna miss anything and you'll get a sweet little discount on your first purchase. Uh, I love you.